Hi guys and welcome to part four, the final part of the IBG 172nd scale um, Panzerkampfwagen 3 Ausf A variant and the completed kit as you can see there it's sat on the spinny thing spinning away so we can get an all around view of the model and uh, and take a look at the details. I decided against, um, I was going to add a little bit of dust and what have you to the road wheels and tracks and thereabouts, and just basically make it look a little bit dusty and sort of uh, and worn, but I quite liked it as it was. And as I'm not going to be putting it on diorama or anything of, of that nature, I didn't want to sort of dirty it up too much. And being unfamiliar with tanks in general, but especially this kind of early model tank, which would have been used, uh, uh, well, presumably early on in the war and according to the magazine that came with it, I don't know what kind of action it would have seen and I don't know how, uh, whether it would have seen a lot of action in, in the mod and what have you. So if anything, it would have maybe gotten dusty in general use. But I decided to I decided to leave it as relatively as a relatively clean example. But um, just to sum up what was done with the kit, the colours that were used were Tamiya colours. The um, the the overall grey, and just to make it a little bit more interesting, I added the brown as shown in the magazine, which you can see in one of the earlier videos. To, uh, to just break up the overall drab greyness of the thing. The tracks, as you can see, have a little sag in them. And being a, a one piece assembly with all the wheels and everything on them, I recreated the sag by dipping the whole track assembly into a cup of hot water to soften the styrene. And then uh, shaping, using my thumbs, holding the tracks, I shaped them to, to generate the sag between the return rollers at the top. And I think that looks quite good, all things considered, considering that uh, there's not a lot of detail to the actual tracks, to the, the link part of the tracks because of the way they're molded. And that's just, just a downside to, uh, to kits of this size and this nature when the tracks and wheels are all molded as one piece like this. But I think that certainly looks much more realistic than a, an incredibly straight run of track, which is how they come out of the box. I've added uh, rust pigments to the exhausts at the back to give them an overall rusted appearance, which I'm ass uh, assuming this seems to be a common thing you see done with tanks. And I'm guessing that they will run, be running quite hot um, because obviously you've got a lot of, of, of heavy metal to move. And, uh, and the exhausts would be relatively thin metal with a quick coat of paint slapped over them. So I think they would rust quite quickly anyway. And then I've picked out the detail of things like the, the jack and, uh, and the tools on the right hand side and painted those, given them a little bit of a dry brush in silver, painted the handles, that kind of thing. And the tank then had an oil wash with a combination of black and um, burnt umber and uh, a, a bit of an oil wash to pick out some of the panel lines. I could have gone a little bit heavier on some places, some of the hatches and such. So uh, I'll have to bear that in mind next, next time around. But overall, I'm quite pleased with it. I also used an oil wash on the suspension springs, which you can see through the road wheels. So I'm glad that I, uh, I did sort of pick those out a bit rather than leaving them um, just plain and obviously if you're going to throw a, a heap of mud and what have you at it then you'd be covering that lot anyway so it wouldn't matter too much. Um, the tank then had the decals applied and a coat of clear or pledge whatever you want to use uh, call it and, uh, and then the oil wash added and then it had a coat of Windsor & Newton Galleria matte varnish. Then the tools and machine guns and bits and pieces were painted after that. The tips of the exhausts were drilled out 
to uh, add a little bit more realism and I did actually mean to um, to darken those with a bit of a soot black which I completely forgot about and I've just realised now looking at the kit uh, and strangely the tips of the exhausts weren't drilled out but the tip of the gun as tiny as it is was actually moulded with a, a little sort of indent so a sort of a how you would drill it out yourself which is which I thought was a really nice touch for such an incredibly small gun so um, so that it was unnecessary to try and drill the tip of that out because that would have been incredibly difficult because as you can see it is very very small the only other thing that I, uh, I wish I'd done now looking at the model is added a bit of clear to the headlights just to um, just to make those stand out a little bit more but I don't know whether they would have had covers on and slits or not and they are quite small so I'm not overly worried about those. Uh, the decals laid on really really nicely, uh, some of the nicest decals I've ever applied to a model ever and I have no idea what made they were but they were lovely and thin and a spot of microsol just made them conform to uh, the lumps on the turret spectacularly so incredibly pleased with those and then uh, a bit of a dry brushing burnt umber um, sort of a dark rust colour on the inner bits of the tracks and then a dry brushing of silver on the tops of the cleats where it would have worn away on uh, on hard paved roads as it rolled and uh, and that's about it so for for a tiny little kit that came with a, a free magazine or came free with a magazine depending on which way you want to look at it which added a bit of interest something to read um, the kit itself was just under £10 which you could easily pay for just the kit on its own and it builds up into a nice little model. The IBG 72nd scale Panzerkampfwagen 3 Ausf A with the World at War magazine. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. And I'm kind of thinking that the next video is going to be another tank, but a bigger one, a 35th scale one. So um, we'll see if I've made my mind up and, and what that will be soon.